everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Adventures of a Real Estate Investor. I'm Susie. And I'm Michael. And we're glad you joined us for this adventure. So today's guest, I'm so, 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 so excited. It's Pilly Yarosi. So thank you so much for joining us today. It is such a pleasure. <laughs> Yay, so honored. So just thrilled to be here with the both of you. I am super excited for this podcast. Super excited just with everything you are doing. So any kind of value that I can provide, I am here ready and willing. No, absolutely. And you're like a ball of energy and a ball of value. So I'm super excited. <laughs> but just so the listeners know, so I actually met Pilly because a variety of ways actually, which kind of makes me, when I reflect on it, I think it's kind of cool. Like I watched your second cup of coffee and then I explored further into that. You know, I found out about moms of multifamily, but we were talking about this offline, but I like truly then like saw you in like your space, or I mean, like, I guess multifamily space because of the multifamily live event that you did like with Bill Allen. And so we attended that and I was like, oh, I want to know more of her, <laughs> you know, cause that's just phenomenal in itself and it's super cool. And so I'm like, like I said, I'm just really excited that you could be here. I love all the content that you're putting out. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And just like, I, I love hearing how the genesis of how you kind of came to this moment where we actually get to like really dig in and talk. I've had you on my podcast and now we get to talk on your podcast, but it started with second cup of coffee, which was just like this crazy idea that my husband and I had during COVID. We're like, we want to talk to more people. Well, why don't we talk to them around noon? Cause we'll, we'll always remember that. Oh, and we can have a, another cup of coffee. And I was like, well, let's just call it second cup of coffee. Wow. And just from that, to mothers of multifamily and and then into multifamily live which was an amazing i mean we can talk about that more that was an amazing partnership with one of our former mentors now investor now partner um and taking that and now this is like the next level we get to have this next level conversation together so super excited yeah absolutely Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'm really excited. Before we dig into everything, I, I want you to share with our listeners, you know, our adventurous family, a little bit more about you and like a little bit about your background and then also how you and why you started investing in real estate. Okay, adventurous family, the adventures of Peely. So I grew yes. up. <laughs> <laughs> the the adventurous adventures of Peely. So I was born and raised in Hawaii. Um, had a great childhood in Hawaii, and I have nothing to complain about. I had a I, you know I had a single mom until I was eight, where she met the love of her life, who also fell in love with me. So he is my like he is he's my daddy. Like just just having that and having that support system from my mom and dad growing up and growing into like being a teenager in Hawaii and having this need to move. I always wanted to move to New York City. So I'm jumping a lot of stuff. So I was in Hawaii, single mom. Hawaii has like, has a really, really bad homeless problem. Mm -hmm. And we'll come back to that later. Um, so I leave the nest. I move to a different island. I go live with my grandparents. I live on the big island for a little bit. I'm actually looking for land there now, either on the big island or Maui, where my, where my, uh, my father has land. So I end up going and living out my dream and moving to New York City. Um, and I promise this all ties in together. I moved to New York City. I lived there for a year. I experienced the culture and it's, and it's amazing there, but I moved to New York City in August, 2001. What happened in September, 2001? Yeah. So that 9-11 like threw my life and threw basically the world into this upheaval, but it made me, it strengthened my resolve to stay and be in New York City and just experience people there because that city came together like nobody's business when that happened. Yeah. And it just it proved to me like the resolve of people in general. Those good people that you surround yourself with, those good people that you see just walking around the streets. I remember, I remember just being stopped and somebody just asking me how I was. And I was just like, I am, I don't know. That's yeah. what I told them. I was like, I don't know, but like, we gave each other a hug and true New York, New York style kept on walking. Like don't know who this person was, probably never met him again, but kept on walking. So 
I go back, I finish my, I go back to Hawaii, finish my degree, come back to New York City and I get into the restaurant business and I meet my husband in 2003, but we don't get together until 2013. And once we get together, and again, I'm skipping a lot there. Uh, once we get together, we work one more year in the bar industry, but that the year before that Hurricane Sandy happened. Mm. So after Hurricane mm. Sandy, a lot of the East Coast was decimated, including New Jersey, where we lived or where, where his family lived. We were still living in the city at the time. So during that last year of bartending and bar managing, we get pulled into the family business. I start working in on sales and Jason actually goes even dives deeper. He becomes a vice president of the company because part owner. And they, and we take the company to the next level because now there are thousands of homes that need to be lifted. So Jason's family's company is a house lifting company. They actually take homes, they lift it above the base flood elevation, which is uh, the BFE, and they repair whatever needs to be done to the foundation and they put the home back down. So this happened, like we did about 2,500 homes since it's happened. And it's been a crazy, just for that company alone, it's been a crazy just journey. So come back to Jason and I, this is 2003. We decide we are done with the restaurant industry. So what's the next step? We decide we wanna start a family. We moved to New Jersey from the city to, into New Jersey. We decide we wanna start a family and I'm done with the restaurant industry. There's no way I'm going to bartend pregnant. So right. the next step for us is we all sit down and we say, what's the next step? What can we do next? So the next thing that we end up doing is getting into real estate because that was the next step for the construction company. The next step for them was to take their construction knowledge and take that to the next step. So I became a real estate agent. It was something that I could do while I was pregnant. I got my, I got my real estate license in, in my first trimester. I started being an agent and I started really sourcing deals from the MLS back then. I'm not sure where the single family um, market is right now, but back then you could still source deals from the MLS. So I get into, I, I become an agent. We start flipping, we start wholesaling. And I might have skipped over the why, but the why was to up level into something that was scalable, something that we could grow as a family. And not only Jason and I as a unit, but Jason and I and our future children, Jason and I and, and his family. Yeah. So that is the why we get, got into real estate. I'm gonna take a break there so you guys can jump in because I can go further into how we started to flip and wholesale and how we got into small multifamily and large multifamily. But this has been like a journey of stepping stones and it's been amazing. No. So like there, yeah, there is a lot to unpack. Right. And I love that actually how you even just ended it with the stepping stones part. Like so much of our life is a stepping stone to our why, but a lot of people want to just like fast forward into it all. And that's not really how it works. So you don't need to get into like the fine details, but can you kind of explain, like, did you plan on the stepping stones? Because I know you said that you're like why was almost to, I don't want to say like scale as a family, but like to get further up, like, did you know that the path you were going to take from like wholesaling and flipping was going to have you end up in multifamily? Absolutely not. <laughs> so, our, our why, what fuels us is our family is is my children is is our larger family it's 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 really like our family and then it's helping people so from flipping um and we got into these large flips we basically took what i told you is we we would take homes we would lift homes up and these were flood ravaged homes like cape cods one story homes and we would not only lift it up once we would lift it up twice build a new so that original first First story is on the top, build a new second floor and then put a basement garage, not basement, but a garage underneath. So now you basically turned a cape into a colonial by lifting the home. 
there was so much involved in that. And I can go into detail if you'd like, but it took us, we thought it was going to take us six months. It ended up taking us almost a year for this flip, first flip. We did a few of these and we were really, really proud of the work that we were doing, but it took so long and it was not scalable. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until we got into a mentorship program and we learned how to how to systematize our business and to do smaller scale flips and then get into wholesaling, which was like a mind blowing technique of you just flip the deal, you flip the contract to someone else. And that was like, boom. So we had some flipping and wholesaling going on and they were really profitable. And we were doing that for a couple of years. And then I go to a RIA meeting and I meet a gentleman and who's like, you have to take a look at these turnkey rentals that I have. I have these turn turnkey rentals and they're going, they, the numbers are fantastic. I'm like, you know what? I am, I, I must've been pregnant with a child who knows, or maybe I was with one of the, I had, a, I had small children. Yeah. The thing that you'll find out about me is that I've been, I've been on this growth, this journey as a mom throughout my entire real estate journey. I, I got my real estate license when I was in my first trimester. And until now, our children are six, four, and our youngest just turned three a couple of days ago. Yee. Yeah, so we have small children. So this is our journey has been with our children. So back to what we're doing, turnkey rentals. I'm like, I really don't want to do turnkey. He was like, you have to look at these numbers. So Jason and I sit down, we look at the numbers and they make kind of, they kind of make sense, but we both agree. We're like, well, we're not going to just take a couple of single family homes. We can do it about ourselves here. What if we did some duplexes or fourplexes? So we ask him, he sends us a couple of duplexes. We end up going in with him, but we buy the properties. We don't do complete turnkey. We basically fund him. And this is sort of, it was sort of the start of what we kind of do in multifamily now. We basically partnered up with him, gave him the money for the property, gave him the money for the construction, gave and used his company and his systems to manage the properties. So this opened up the door to this amazing, amazing thought of multifamily. So Jason comes to me one day and I know I was pregnant with our second child. Mm -hmm. I remember, distinctly remember this conversation. He's like, if we can do four, why not 40? Why not 400? And I just say, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> no, with a capital N, we have too much going on. We have flipping, we have wholesaling, we have construction. He was still a partner in a restaurant business that he had in New York. He, he still had a brewery. Like there was so much going on in our lives. And I was a real estate agent. There was so much going in, in, in our lives that I was like, I don't want to drop the one ball that is so important. And that's our family. And we're growing it right now. Mm -hmm. Jason's a bulldog when it comes to ideas. And I'm thankful that he is because I am really risk adverse. I don't want to take risk if I can avoid it. He, on the other hand, saw the opportunity and he knew that I needed, that we both needed at the time, education to take us the next step further. So instead of like in our wholesaling and flipping it, um, life, we waited years until we got into mentorship. When we got into multifamily, we did that right away. And those eight months took us to our first 94 unit deal. Um, which closed at the beginning of 2017. And we've been going up since then. So you know what I love that you pull out of that or like that you come back to is like, you remember everything pretty distinctly from when you were pregnant. And like, I know how like you as a mother, it's like very important how this has all happened in that process, which, you know, drew me I don't want to say drew me to you because that almost sounds weird, but like after I saw you on second cup of coffee and then learned more about the moms of multifamily, like I thought that was super important. So yes, I don't have babies, but like even as a military spouse who moves a lot, like I understand the whole identity because like we, as women and as men, right? Like we attach who we are to our identity and how like that can get lost when other stuff is going on. So like how did you move forward or decide to even move forward with moms of multifamily? And like, what have you seen from that? Like, what do you think is like the deepest thing that most moms and or women have stashed away for them to not want to initially get into multifamily? 
So the one thing, the one answer, because the one question I would ask all the moms is how do you do it? How are you a mom? How do you do all these things? And really I've actually expanded. I'm like thinking about the growth of this thought to just like, it's including dads too. Because dads go through an incredible growth process. They are here with us. They, there are some single, single dad, like single parent dads out there. So this is for you dads too. It's not only for the moms, but the moms that I spoke with because I could speak with them on a really one-on-one -on -one basis because I'm a, I was a mom, or I am a mom growing through real estate. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that would always come up was I would ask them how they would do it. Actually, I'll tell you three. The number one thing is I didn't do it alone. And that goes for anyone. Like if anybody tells you that I did this all by myself, they're either they're lying or they're, they're not putting, giving their teammates enough credit. Mm -hmm. So most of the moms I would ask would say, I have this, I built this incredible team around me of people that, that know, like, and trust me, of people that support me. I mean, of people that do things better than me, of, of spouses that do things better than me that can help out in these different things that I'm doing. So that was one of them, building the team. And then the other one was giving myself grace. Mm. That was huge. And I heard that a lot. And these are from women who are just starting. These are women from women, like I've had Kathy Fetke on. I've had, I've had Vina Jetty and she, she had twins. Never mind like one at a time, she had twins. I've had so many amazing women on, Anna Kelly, who's built this, who's gone from basically living in section eight to building this amazing portfolio. Wow. Like these women that I have had on, like they'll tell me like, it's grace, Peely. Like I give myself grace. I allow myself to grow. I understand, even if I don't understand in the moment, I understand now that I need to give myself the grace to grow. I need to give myself the grace to dig in a little deeper and understand where those mistakes were. And the other things that I have learned through this is that, and this came, this would be the third one, is that our mistakes and our failures, and we've talked about this before, are nothing but stepping stones, regardless of which one they are. There, because sometimes we are so focused on those failures that we've had and not focused enough on the success. But if we focus too much on the success, we'll never grow. Mm -hmm. So if you use your success and failures as stepping stones, every time you have them, even if it's just the infinitesimal amount that you are growing, that's where the growth happens in those minute stepping stones that you take on a daily basis. Yes, there's gonna be a huge success. I mean, you guys just had a closing. What a huge success. But now that becomes a stepping stone. Because mm -hmm. what's next? What's next? You, you live in that success for that moment, you bask in it, but then how are you gonna use that moment to explode out of it? How big of a stepping stone can you make that? So like our big, biggest failures can become our biggest stepping stones. So those are just three of like the main key points that I've learned from these mamas. I got to interview all through, like before COVID happened, all through COVID. And I've made such amazing connections that, I mean, these are women that I will know and love forever. So yeah, that's, that's moms of multifamily. <laughs> yeah. And I was going to say, I love it. Cause like, it's a lot of it is like, like with even multifamily, the way I see it is like relationship based and like we're creating and like, even as a mom, like from the very beginning, like you're creating another human. Like I see a ton of the parallels, right? Like we, yes, dads have to do this too, but I'm just saying like for the creation, like in our belly part, but like there's creating, there's relationships, there's like the having to figure out like the basic need of shelter, like you truly take care of somebody. And it's like very deep, you know, especially because of everything that happens. And so like, I see a lot of the parallels. But so I just really genuinely wanted to know like what some people's hesitations are, because yeah, like, even not as a mom, like we 
as people just don't even give ourselves enough grace, you know, and like focusing on the failures is almost like, I mean, that goes along with it too. And we're not giving ourselves like the benefit of the doubt, even that we're like good enough to do what we're good enough to do. But I mean, like if you created a life and like you're creating good humans, like you're good enough to do whatever you want, whatever you put your mind to. And that's huge within itself. I love it. That's another, another one of my uh, whys. I want to create good humans. <laughs> I'm just going to pull that out. Um, it's, I mean, to everything that you said, it's like, it's no matter if you're a mom or a dad or, or you don't have any children, maybe you're single, maybe you never want to have children. It's all relative, right? So what you do with your life is going to be different from everyone else, but what are you going to do to keep on feeling yourself to take the next step and not concentrating so much on like live in the moment, but then how are you going to use that moment to grow? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What, what I'm hearing a lot here really was, is really a, a mindset shift and like a lot because women are undergoing like a mindset shift. And like, I know you're huge on mindset, right? Especially like the Aloha mindset, which I've heard you talk about before. Would you mind like just elaborating a little bit on that Aloha mindset for our listeners? On the Aloha mindset. <laughs> <laughs> so just in case anybody wants to see the video, uh, it is in how to master a, rich fit, a fit rich life in 15 days. We actually, something else that kind of came out of COVID um, because we just, we just needed to get more of us out there because we weren't able, I mean, we had a meetup that was meeting every month and we had like a hundred, hundreds of people attend these meetups and all of a sudden we were shut down. So Jason and I had so much to say. So we, we started a second cup of coffee and then we had, we had our, we wrote a book. So the Aloha mindset is how I start my day every day. And when I don't, I can feel it. Mm -hmm. So A-L-O-H-A, -A, awakening, get out of bed. Like that's the first step. Just get yourself out of bed. I know there's going to be those days, again, giving yourself grace. There's going to be those days, maybe your kids woke you up 10 times during the night. Maybe they're sleeping with you and they're like, smashed on your face it's happened to me <laughs> get out of bed roll out of bed and do what you need to do to get it done so take those moments get out of bed brush your teeth get out of bed go retrieve your phone that you put halfway across the world get out of bed your alarm that you put up halfway across the world drink a glass of water whatever it needs you need to do to wake yourself up and I'm going to be honest here, sometimes it's, it requires me putting a yoga mat on the side of my bed and rolling onto my yoga mat because I know I'm going to be so tired. I'm not going to be even make it to my garage gym. <laughs> and I have to do my stretches on the yoga mat, but that is me waking up some days. Love. So this is where prayer and meditation and, and silence comes into play. Whatever you need to do to make it right within your body, within your soul, whether it takes prayer, whether it takes meditation, whether it takes grounding your hands into the dirt and getting the energy out of the earth, whatever it entails, do what you need to do because you need to center yourself in love. You need to be kind and thankful to yourself first before you can open yourself up to the world. You need to fill your cup. I know that's been said a thousand times. Doesn't make it less true. You need to fill your cup before mm -hmm. you can pour into others. Next is opportunity. If you can see it, you can believe it, you can achieve it. So whether this is a vision board, whether this is journaling, whatever this is for you, you need to do it every day. You need to write it down every day. You need to see it every day. You need to talk about it every day. You need to look at it every day. Whatever it is, whatever makes that vision solid for you, you need to do it. I'm not gonna tell you how to do it. You just need to do it. You need to find out which way works best for you. So I can't, I, I have so many journals. It's, it's not even funny. Like I have so many like half used, quarter used journals because I am not really, I'm not quote good at journaling. So 
I have turned that into using my phone and just putting in things that I'm grateful for, or like finding a random sheet of paper and writing that down. Anything that I'm grateful for, anything that I can think of in that moment. And then I have my vision board. So I look at my vision board for at least 30 seconds every day. And I have to actually hold my husband accountable to this because we decided that we're gonna look at it together for 30 seconds every day. So the next one is, is O, oh no, I just said the O, H for health. So this is one of my favorite because during all of COVID, even before COVID, Jason and I are huge on keeping healthy, keeping fit. So H is for health. It's to do what needs to be done to keep yourself healthy. At least get sweaty and turn up your heart rate for at least 30 minutes every single day, mm -hmm. at the very least. And this could be walking, this could be yoga, this could be whatever it takes to take your body to that next level, like to keep yourself healthy. And it also takes, and some people need to hear this right now, going to the doctor, getting mm -hmm. your monthly checkup. Like if something's wrong, go get it checked out. I know a lot of us, especially moms, will be like, oh, that's nothing. Oh, that spot's nothing. Oh, that crick in my back's nothing. I go and see my chiropractor at least once a month, if not more, because I know what happens if I don't. So do those things that you need to do for your body, this vessel that we've been given to take us to the next level. And then the next one is aspire. Surround yourself by those that you want to aspire to be like, whether it is through podcasts, whether it is through books, whether it is in real time with real people, because I know the world's kind of opening up. I know some people are thinking it's going to close down again, whatever it is, surround yourself by those people that you know that you can aspire to be like. Mm -hmm. Surround yourself with podcasts like your podcast that is good things for your ears, good thing for your mind. Surround yourself with these types of things and that's how you bring the aspirational piece into it. And I understand a lot of your listeners are, are like, this sounds a lot like, a lot like Miracle Morning. So it is. Even, even Hal Elrod says this, says this every time he talks about it. He's like, I, I studied okra. I studied all these greats before me. And these are all the things that they do. I took the Miracle Morning because there were, there were things in the Miracle Morning that I just, I couldn't do. Like I read every day, but I, I don't read 10 pages or I don't, I don't journal or there's things in that that I don't do. So I took it and created something that I would do. So that's the thing when it comes to your daily routine, whether or not it is the Miracle Morning and Savers, again, Hal Elrod, mm -hmm. incredible book if you haven't read it yet, or you make something up on your own. I mean, uh, the Aloha Morning Mindset used to be called Create, and then it changed into the Aloha Morning Mindset. Things evolve and let it evolve, but make it yours, whatever it is. Absolutely. And I think th those things like that, like those daily routines are what set very successful people apart from everybody else, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Having those things, like whether, you know, Susie and I have read Miracle Morning. I've read several of the different Miracle Morning books, you know, for entrepreneurs, blah, blah, blah. There were several different versions of it. And, you know, we've taken that and we've kind of done our own thing from there, right? Like we kind of have like what you've done with the Aloha mindset, which is incredible, and I'm, we'll link to your book down below in the, in, the, uh, uh, in the show notes for that. So our listeners can get a hold of that as well. But whatever it is, it's Aloha Mindset, Miracle Morning, or make up your own, like you were saying, you know, like do something every single day to have some consistency. Because I guarantee you doing that is going to make yourself 1% better every single day. And then that 1% is going to compound over time. And then you're just going to see exponential results very shortly, I promise. So it's, it is incredible. And like you said at the beginning, like if you don't do it one day, you can tell, right? And like, I'm the same way, especially I have like ADHD. And so like not doing that and not like vectoring my day and centering my day, it being my anchor for the day, like I'm all over the place. And then at the end of the day, I'm like, wow, I did a million different things all in the wrong direction. And now I have no idea. And I feel like I haven't done anything all day, you know? So yeah. That you just like, you just explained me to a T. That's why I need 
I need systems. I need systems like the Aloha Morning Mindset. I need systems that guide my business. I need systems to hire people. I need systems to guide my day. I need my calendar. If I didn't have my calendar, I would be all over the place. Right. I'm a very like, uh, I'm uh, not that it has anything to do with being from Hawaii, but I'm very like, let's go to the beach. Let's hang out. Let's do all the things. <laughs> so I need the I need the foundation and systems and having a morning routine gives you the foundation that you need to have the strength to push through whatever it is you're going through, whether it's good or bad, mm -hmm. just to give you the energy to like take yourself there. Yeah. And something else that I love that you did was like change it to work for you. Right. Because so many people will see something and be like, oh, well, I can't do it like that. So I can't do it. But no, like it's all just a guide. Everything is just a guide. Like you don't have to reinvent the wheel at all and start over from the beginning. Just like, yeah, just see it as a guide and create it on your own because that's where you get the energy and the passion and the fuel to drive the rest of you forward. You can't, if you're listening to this to the, on the podcast and you're not on, not on YouTube, you can't see me because I'm like pointing all the points. Like, <laughs> that's everything. That's everything. It's, it's a guide. People that put content out, the podcasts, these are meant to be a guide. Yes, if you can, copy and paste. That's the, I find that's the easiest way to get yourself to the next step. If you want to get into large multifamily, copy and paste it. If you want to get into flipping or wholesaling, copy and paste it. The thing is in that pasting part, Put in your own flavor. If there's something about it that you don't know how to do or you can't do or you don't want to do, then who's forcing you to do it? No one. Yeah. Do it the way you want to, especially when it comes to your morning routine and you filling your cup. That's you. That's your time. So you use it wisely. You set that time up for yourself. You take the responsibility for it and then you do it. And then you fill your cup up so that in turn, you may pour in to others who are seeking your advice as well or seeking your energy. Yeah, this is incredible. And I couldn't agree with you more with that. Yeah, definitely need something to fill your cup up before you can pour in others. I love that mentality for sure. And Peely, it's been such a pleasure chatting with you. I would love, there's so many other things I right. want to unpack. <laughs> I feel like we just scratched the surface of, of you. But we'll have to have you back on to do that. Uh, unfortunately, we're getting towards the end of the show, which brings us to the Adventurous Four questions. These are four exploratory questions we ask all of our, our guests. So Adventurous family, get ready. Here we go. Question number one, where is one place you wish to travel to and why? Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm from there. It's just, it's my answer. There's so many other places I could go to, but Hawaii is, is my home. And I haven't been there for over two years. Oh, wow. So I need to go. I need to get back home. I need to put my feet and hands in the sand. And it's just, I miss it. So Hawaii. I get it. I totally do. So the second question is, what is the number one thing on your bucket list? And how are you leveraging real estate investing to achieve it? Number one thing on my bucket list is buying land in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a lifelong goal of mine without getting into the politics of it, the Hawaiians lost their land a long yeah. time ago. So since we're not going to be given it back, I want to buy it back. I want to buy a piece that I can, I can grow my family on. I can help my people there. I am looking to combine, I, I basically want to do agrovoltaics, which is basically the combination of agriculture and photovoltaics. So I'm not only helping to feed my people in Hawaii, but I'm also helping them to become more energy independent. So Love. that is a huge thing on my bucket list and I could talk forever about it. So I'm going to stop. It's incredible. <laughs> it is incredible. So the third question really is what is one piece of advice you would give somebody who's looking to start passively investing in real estate? Listen to this podcast. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Everyone needs to start somewhere. So why not right here? So if you are here listening to this podcast, keep on listening, start here, dig in. It's, I find it so much easier to dig into one thing. So if you are already listening to this podcast, keep on listening, 
Go to the first episode, listen to the last episode and keep on listening to every single podcast that comes out. Because if you focus in on one thing, chances are it'll take you to your next step. Make the stepping stone again as as you can. So why not let this podcast be your stepping stone? Plus, I'd like a good adventure. (laughs) <laughs> thank you so much and then the fourth and final question is if you had unlimited resources available to you how would you leave an impact oh wow unlimited resources <sighs> i think i know you might buy the entire you know hawaii back and get it. <laughs> yeah, that's the first thing that came into my mind i'd probably just buy all of hawaii <laughs> um but seriously i would again it's going in on one thing right so i would find that one thing which is start with and the thing is, if I bought all of Hawaii right now, what would I do with it? I don't have the, like, I guess, unlimited resources. So I guess I would figure yeah. it out with that. But I would still start with that one thing, with the, with the one farm, with the one photovoltaic, agrovoltaic system. And then I would grow and I would show the people how to take care of themselves. This is one thing to like be omnipotent because that's, that, that's sort of what the question is. How, what would you do with omnipotence? <laughs> I don't know if I want that. Um, but I would still start with that one thing and start educating people on how they can become more energy dependent, how they can grow their own food or partner up with farms that grow food that they can in turn take from while still giving to the farm. So it's, it's starting with that one thing, educating people on how to do it, So it's not just me, omnipotent me, I guess, in this situation, giving, 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 because at some point my energy will be depleted. It's, it comes with education, right? So educating my people on how to get more independent would, would be something I would want to do with unlimited resources is to educate. This is an incredible answer and I love it because it, it really actually aligns with Susie and I's why as well. Like it's very close to it. Like we want to be able to give back to, you know, some developing countries and like edu- through education because education can solve so many Just issues. Just basic education. Bas- basic education. Yeah. And, you know, so that's one of our, one of our whys for sure. So well, just like, I know, I know you're talking about going into like developing countries, but like just in America alone, yeah, I, I would, I kind of wanted to keep it here, like start with Hawaii, teach people in Hawaii, like basic, again, with basic education, how do you basically feed yourself? Mm -hmm. How do you feed yourself if if the ships stop coming with all the supplies? Right, yeah. How do you, like, then they went through this with COVID, like the Mm -hmm. ships, like, slowed down let's say they really really slowed down and there was a food there were food shortages we experienced it on a larger scale with like toilet paper who knew (laughs) but how do you do these things how do you take care of yourself how does an island in the middle of the pacific ocean become independent again Mm -hmm. and i'm not talking on a political scale i'm just talking on like a personal scale on a people Mm -hmm. scale on a cultural scale how do you become more than like there's the intellectual independence is the education independence, but you also have to think of energy and food because these are the things that keep our bodies going. So how do you take it that next step? So that is, that is my, um, that's like the, the larger goal at hand. Oh, I love it. That's great. So Peely, would you mind sharing with the adventurous family how they can get a hold of you? And also, you can briefly discuss, you know, the seven-figure multifamily and stuff like that and how people can find out more about that as well. That'd be awesome. Fantastic. Um, you can actually find everything on Jason and I, on my husband and I, at um, www.yerusiholdings.com. That's our website. You can actually find everything there. Uh, but thank you for asking about seven-figure multifamily. This is, Jason and I have been coaching for some years now, but we decided to team up with seven-figure flipping which was the original mentorship that we had joined when we were flippers and wholesalers. And so many of our friends and family from that era, let's call it, that group have become investors in all of our deals, including our partner, Bill Allen. So we partnered up with him and 
created an incredible program. So it's myself, Jason, Bill Allen, and our other partner, Chad King. And I would be honored if you checked us out at sevenfigureflipping.com or sevenfiguremultifamily.com. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And we'll definitely make sure we have all the links to your website and that as well um, in the show notes below. So. Yeah. And so thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Like it's truly been a pleasure. Um, I actually lived on Hawaii for a little bit of time. So I love the whole aloha mindset. Like even the first time I heard it, it really set in. So thank you for joining us here. It's been a true pleasure. So honored to be here. And if I can leave one last word is to lead with aloha too. Like lead with all the love, light, and peace in your heart. And I know that you both do that with this podcast. So honored to be here. Have a great adventure, everyone. And thank you. Thank you so much. So until next time, explore more, adventure awaits.